most people don't know that China has a lot of dinosaurs. There is a very big diversity of fossils here. China is really one of the best places in the world right now to do paleontology on dinosaurs and birds. China is the new land of dinosaurs, I would say. My name is Alida Bayel. If people ask me what is my job, then I tell them. I work on the evolution of birds and dinosaurs. I'm an associate researcher and professor at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology. Paleontology is the study of life on Earth. The Earth is more than four billion years old, so paleontology is actually a really huge science where you study the evolution of you know, bacteria, plants or animals that have lived on Earth this whole time. Before I came to China, I already knew that this institute was one of the best in the world for paleontology, and they're published in really good journals like Science, Nature. Most people don't know about Chinese dinosaurs and Chinese birds because they're more familiar with the dinosaurs that were popularized by Jurassic Park. You know, like you have a Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops. Those are very famous dinosaurs from America. When compared to China, really, we just recently found, you know, the Jeho Biota in Liaoning province in the 1980s. In the Jeho Biota from the early Cretaceous, you have a lot of transitional specimens, uh, you know, between birds and dinosaurs. So you can see 10 million years of evolution uh, between dinosaurs that are on their way to becoming birds. So this fossil right here is one of the most famous fossils in China. It's a fossil bird called Confucius Ornis, and they have found many, many specimens, like thousands of specimens of this species. It's very well preserved with skin, feathers. This was a male because it has two long tail feathers and the females presumably had much shorter tail feathers. Actually, these type of fossils from China have helped us uh, understand the early evolution of flight and also reconstruct a lot of, um, you know, flight apparatuses in dinosaurs and birds. In China, especially from the early Cretaceous of the Jeho Biota in Liaoning province, we have a lot of soft tissues preserved like eyes, skin, internal organs or feathers and cellular preservation also. You have amazing preservation of dinosaurs, birds, mammals, crocodiles, salamanders, pterosaurs. There is a very, very big diversity of fossils here. Elsewhere in the world, uh, we don't have uh, that type of beautiful preservation, especially for the dinosaur bird transition. We don't really understand why the preservation is so beautiful, really, for this time period. But we think that after the death of the specimens, they were buried very rapidly into really shallow lakes. And then there were volcanoes surrounding the areas that were sporadically erupting. And the ashes also helped uh, preserve these fossils. Probably the most important ones right now would be Inner Mongolia, Yunnan, and Gansu province. And of course, Liaoning for the Jeho Biota. I never thought that I would get a PhD and be a professor here at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's the best job ever, it's the best opportunity. I'm working on two different things. So the evolution of the skulls of birds and dinosaurs. So how really uh, you go from a dinosaur skull all the way to a bird skull. The second aspect that I do is I look at DNA, which is the genetic material of all living organisms in really old animals. The oldest DNA ever sequenced is about one million years old. But really life on Earth is four billion years old, so we have a big gap into you know, our access to DNA sequences. Perhaps we can use other methods than DNA sequencing to fully understand the evolution of life. Because everything that has happened in the past really 
has an impact on the present. From a career perspective, I would say China really, really is a great place if any researcher is interested in dinosaurs they should really come work in China.